And we now move on to questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And I call Ms. Katrina Ruan. Um, question number one. Um, as the House may be aware, structural maintenance includes structural drainage, patching and surface dressing as well as resurfacing. I can advise the member that in respect of resurfacing, the current projected expenditure for 2015-16 is estimated at just over £21 million. This has been a challenging year for capital funding for resurfacing when compared to previous years and an area where I've had discussions with industry representatives to listen to their concerns. I sought and obtained additional funding for structural maintenance in the November monitoring round. The executive allocated an additional £5 million and I'm aware that this was very much welcomed by the construction industry. The overall structural maintenance budget for 2015-16 is estimated to outturn at around £44 million against the independently assessed requirement of £141 million. This is a significant shortfall for this year, but has to be seen in the context of an investment of £454 million over the last four years. I would like to assure the member that I will continue to make strong bids for additional structural maintenance funds at every opportunity. Thank you. Um, well, I have to say I'm very concerned about the Minister's answer. Uh, as she will be aware, um, the, it's, the annual average is 70 million, so there's an enormous gap. And obviously, this has led to um, deterioration on our roads. I just would like to let the Minister know that uh, the Tam Nahari Hill Road in Hilltown has subsided, and I would welcome uh, an update in relation to in writing uh, in, if she doesn't have the answer today on when this will be dealt with. I thank the, the member for her question. Obviously, the, the structural maintenance budget for 2016-17 is estimated to start at some £46 million, so that's a much better starting place than we were at, in, at last year, in last year. Um, so as to compared to 15-16. Now, while I appreciate the concerns of the member, I hope that she understands that I, I share those concerns in relation to, to investment and will continue um, to, to call for additional monies to be spent in, in, our, in our roads infrastructure. Um, she has been very specific in relation to the Hilltown area and I will write to the member with regards to that particular scheme. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank the Minister for answers so far. Uh, while there has been a welcome improvement in terms of both street lighting and potholes that are being dealt with in North Down as regards um, Transport NI. There's still obviously quite a considerable backlog of, uh, of, pot of potholes. Um, can I ask the Minister what is Transport NI's inspection process as regards potholes and the criteria that will apply in terms of road services? I thank, thank the, um, the member for his question. Um, my, my, my department does have a duty of care um, to maintain all public roads in, in a reasonable condition um, and irrespective of budgetary constraints, the department still has been trying to, to meet that legislative requirement. Um, Transport NI regularly inspects all road networks and defects are prioritised for repair uh, depending on their severity. Um, earlier in the year, all the roads were still being inspected as normal and, and defects were at that stage prioritised um, for repair. There has been uh, a build up of considerable backlog, as the members have said, um, of patching and, and other routine maintenance works. Um, thankfully, as part of the November monitoring, I sought and was successful in securing the additional £15 million pounds of resource. Um, which was prioritised by the department, by the executive, um, for road maintenance. Um, this has allowed external contractors to be re-employed in in many areas, and um, and I'm hopeful that um, members will actually see um, that work is being carried out um, quite quickly within their areas, and certainly much quicker than it had been before. Um, so I'm, I'm keen to see that the public can see the difference quickly, um, but I would also ask for understanding from members in relation to the fact that there has been a backlog. Mr Speaker, far from me to suggest that we're going back into the dark ages where those wonderful Roman roads all but disappeared due to uh, lack of maintenance. But would the minister agree with me that the situation is now so radical, so serious, with some roads not 
due for resurfacing for 102 years, which you will agree with me that for the sake of the ratepayers and taxpayers and the contractors, there has to be a new approach to how we maintain our roads. I do thank the, um, the member for his question and, and I, I suppose really I would be of the same mind in relation to a stitch in time saves nine um, and that we should be looking at after the roads that we currently have in our, in our um, as part of our infrastructure. Um, obviously there was, has been a major consequence of, of reduced funding um, and maintenance costs are likely then to increase the longer that we, that we leave our roads without. Um, increasing the amount of, of patching and, and so forth. So, I mean, I'm of a similar vein to where the, the member is with regards to that, and I do see this as a priority, and it will continue to be a priority for me while I'm in the department, and certainly um, I will be lobbying for additional monies um, with, if and when they become available. Thank you. And uh, before we move on, could I just uh, inform members that question seven has been withdrawn. We move on. Mr. Gordon Lyon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question two. I can advise that over the past five years, extensive maintenance work has been undertaken to prevent landslides, rock falls, and improve sea defences along the A2 Antrim Coast Road. In the last two years, Transport NI has delivered a £950,000 structural maintenance programme to repair and strengthen sea defences and minimise landslide risk. The required work had been identified following detailed inspections by Transport NI staff. As you'll be aware, in a recent visit to the area, I witnessed the ongoing challenges faced by my department through storm damage and coastal erosion. I was also able to see firsthand the crucial engineering works currently being carried out to address these engineering problems and maintain the integrity of this key route. In light of the severe storms and heavy rainfall this winter, a further detailed inspection of the sea defences and slopes will be undertaken this spring with a view to identifying further work and funding required along the strategic part of our road network. In the meantime, Transport NI engineers will continue to monitor this road closely and will carry out temporary and or permanent repairs as appropriate in a bid to keep this vital transport corridor open. Mr. Lyons for supplement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for uh, her answer. The Minister will be aware of how important the coast road is to um, the promotion and de development of tourism in the wider East Antrim area. Um, she obviously uh, notes the, the importance of that uh, as a route, and so could I ask further to her answer if she could give more detail on the nature of the structural maintenance that has taken place and what areas specifically are, are most at risk of landslide? Thank the, the member for his for his question, and I can advise that the, the majority of work um, entails strengthening of the sea defences or construction of new sea defences where existing structures were damaged beyond repair. Other work includes the, in, the construction of landslide retaining walls at Glen Arm, soil nailing of slopes at Carn Lock, and construction of new roadside parapet walls in the vicinity of Ballygally. Um, I'm advised by officials just with regards to the areas at risk that, um, that due to the soil conditions along the A2 coast road, um, it's extremely difficult to predict where or when a slope may, fa may fail, causing a landslide. Um, efforts are being focused on active areas where slides affecting the road occur and remedial works are undertaken just to minimise further deposits affecting the road in future. <coughs> Unfortunately, with the current levels of rainfall, um, slopes uh, are susceptible and there could be failures. Um, these are inevitable um, and they may present future funding issues um, for my department. Uh, I did recently visit um, the area and I'm very conscious of, of the challenges that there are and, and obviously would like to pay tribute to the engineers who work very hard um, to keep that road open and to keep it safe. Thank you. And it comes to Roy Bay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, improving the sea defences along the coast road could potentially involve a range of agency if additional work is required. It may involve the uh, Department of the Environment in terms of planning, NIEA in terms of the environment, Rivers Agency at, at Mouse to, to Rivers, and, and the Department itself with their responsibility for roads. 
Now, whether it involves protecting the public road or other private property that's been, uh, that is being endangered, can the Minister advise how all these groups can be uh, coordinated so that speedy decisions and results can, can emerge so that the necessary work can occur, whether it is the department in terms of the road service or a private uh, property that needs additional defences? Okay, I thank the, the member for his question and he'll understand that I, I too represent a coastal constituency and um, I'm very aware of, of the issues surrounding that and, and where sometimes it's maybe not necessarily um, the right thing to put in defences, it may, it may be uh, other alternatives. Um, he will be aware that um, I've coordinated a group um, before Christmas. Um, I brought together um, various representatives from, from council and from Rivers Agency and, and also from the National Trust um, in order to discuss um, exactly what, he, what he's saying. Um, and it's really about looking towards a lead department, which is something which has really been absent um, in this place up until this point. So those conversations are ongoing and I hope to actually have another one of those meetings um, within the next few weeks um, to set in place really a strategy for um, any incoming um, minister um, to take forward. But I, I do accept the point that he, that he has made and that it is something which is being recognised and, and hopefully can be dealt with. That um, included in the, uh, the included in the fresh start agreement is a commitment by the executive to advance the A5 uh, Western Transport Corridor project. The Irish government has also made a commitment to contribute 75 million pounds, much funding towards the project. This funding commitment is intended to ensure that, subject to the successful completion of statutory procedures. Construction of the new buildings to Strabane section can commence in 2017 with an estimated completion date of 2019. In December, I invited landowners to meet with me. This was an open and frank discussion and I've since followed up on concerns which they raised. Work on the new draft statutory orders and a new environmental statement is now complete. The next step is for the publication of the new environmental statement and new draft statutory orders and I hope to make an announcement in relation to that shortly. Mr. for uh, uh, thank the Minister for her answer. Um, I understand that the signing off the draft orders um, will, will trigger a six-week public consultation. Um, and I know from previous questions to her predecessor that there will be a number of public exhibitions uh, in, in, in the back of that there. Could the Minister give us any clarity at all as to when those may be signed off and when that six-week consultation may uh, start? The member will always be aware that I've been doing a considerable amount of work in relation to this um, added to obviously the, the announcement um, that I'm looking for um, to introduce the Land Acquisition and Compensation Bill um, in order to, um, to assist those landowners as we move forward through this process. Um, that accompanied by work which I've also been doing with, around the land agents has, is, is obviously part of the preparation work which I've wanted to, um, to complete before um, moving on to any announcement. I am hopeful that an announcement will be made um, quite shortly. And call Mr. Trevor Clark. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her answers? Um, can I also say on my feet I welcome the uh, article in the Farm and Life at the weekend where it refers to enhanced compensation for those who are actually losing their land in relation to uh, the, the compulsory vesting. But can I ask the Minister, and I mean, and I, obviously I welcome that announcement, can I ask the Minister why this wasn't announced sooner or why something like this wasn't done sooner within this mandate? I uh, thank the, the member for his question and to be honest I, I really can't give an answer to that other than to say I really don't know. Um, since I've come into post I have made it my business to, to have conversations to see what the issues have been in relation um, to the A5 and the A6. As, as I said in a previous uh, answer to the previous question I have met with land agents who highlight a number of concerns. Um, one obviously was in relation to the land acquisition and compensation. Um, I have and I'm currently seeking executive approval on the introduction of the Land Acquisition and Compensation Bill. Um, I will be ex um, seeking accelerated passage for this bill um, just to bring compensation levels into line um, with the, the rest of the United Kingdom with regards to well, particularly in England and Wales around compulsory land purchase. Um, this is a clear anomaly 
um, I want to ensure that landowners in Northern Ireland are treated fair and equitably, uh, and that is the purpose of the request around this bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, would the Minister agree that there is a serious legacy issue relating to infrastructure in the North West? And uh, what generally, uh, uh, what additional funding or financial backing will be allocated uh, beyond this point, given the, the draft budget for 2016-2021 doesn't allow for uh, major investment in infrastructure in the North West? Um, I, I thank the, the, minister, the member for his question, although I'm a wee bit perplexed by it, um, given the fact that the, um, the flagship projects um, for both the A5 and A6 have recently been announced in the budget statement. Um, and this will significantly um, help the connectivity around the North West. But if, but if the member does have other projects which he thinks would be of significance and, and would, would assist with all of this. I'm, I'm more than content to meet with him to discuss his concerns. I call Mr. Jim uh, with eight miles of this stage having to be constructed through a floodplain, why is her department not able to say how much that will add to the cost of this project? Or does cost not matter? When it comes to this project, is cost only an inhibitor when it comes to fixing our potholes? Well, thank the member for his question, and obviously cost does matter. Um, in relation to um, this particular scheme, a considerable amount of work and research has been undertaken in order to find the, the appropriate route. And uh, once the announcements will be made, then the member will, 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 will see what that is. And I call Mr. Chris Question four. The member will be aware of my recent announcement about three bicycle routes in Belfast, which are currently under construction. Work started on these last week. Members who have been in the city centre may have seen the activity in Alfred Street, and I expect these to be completed by Easter. These routes will link existing cycle tracks from the west and south of the city to the city centre and will provide greater protection for people who choose to make journeys in the city by bicycle. The schemes will also support the successful Belfast Bike Share Scheme and help more people gain the confidence to use the bicycle as an enjoyable, sustainable mode of transport. For example, the Alfred Street Scheme will link the two docking stations at the Gasworks with the docking station behind Clarence Court in Alfred Street and the docking station in Arthur Street. These schemes are three of the five schemes consulted on last summer. Designs for the other two schemes, which will link the east of the city to the city centre, are still being considered, uh, taking account of comments from the information days held as part of the consultation process. Those schemes will complete a 2.5 kilometre route from the Westlink Shared Foot and Cycleway through the city centre to Titanic Quarter Station and onto the Ballymacart Walkway, the Conswater Community Greenway and the Cumber Greenway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I warmly welcome the investment that the Minister has outlined? Adequate investment is essential to delivering safe cycle routes in Northern Ireland. Um, but the DRD cycle strategy aims for 10 pounds per person per head, and the DRD Sustrans Bike Life report uh, shows that Belfast residents support a 25 pounds per person spend uh, on cycling. Given that the spend in 14 to 15 was four pounds per person, and 15 to 16 is three pound per person, can I ask the minister if she thinks that's an adequate level of investment, and what her allocation for cycling will be in the 16-17 budget? Thank the, the member for his question, uh, and obviously I have been quite active in, in the short period that I have been minister in relation to cycling, um, and, and hope to continue that in, in the coming weeks. Um, this year, it's anticipated that the department will spend 2.4 million pounds on cycling. Um, this includes expenditure on the active school travel program, and in 14-15, the total of 7.5 million was spent on cycling. Um, and this obviously included quite a significant amount of capital on four active, uh, active travel demonstration projects. Um, 
Obviously, there, uh, there are other departments who are also contributing to the spend in relation to cycling as well. Um, and it's very difficult then to actually calculate exactly how much in the over, in the overall, from the overall executive. Um, I'm aware of, of Sustrans' manifesto and, um, and the plans which they have. You, you'll also be aware that my department is undertaking to develop a bicycle network plan for Belfast, which will guide the development of infrastructure around the city for, for the next 10 years. Um, and I also have plans in relation to a greenway strategy and, and would be hopeful that any incoming minister would see the benefits of, of both of those plans in relation to allocation of funding. I call Mr. Sammy Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I welcome Minister's statement um, today. Um, since 2014, the Giro d'Italia, there's been a big increase in cycling. Could I ask the Minister if she could outline what steps her department are taking to, pr to promote and foster cycling in East Belfast? And our politics is obviously local, but um, uh, obviously the, the Giro d'Italia was a wonderful showcase event which focused um, a remarkable interest in cycling right across Northern Ireland, not just in, in East Belfast. Um, but cycling, of course, it is um, an important and healthy, sustainable way of travelling for, for everyday purposes. Um, as, as I've said, the, to support and promote the growth of cycling, um, we're taking forward elements of the 2015 um, bicycle strategy, which includes a number of flagship schemes in Belfast city centre, um, the development, obviously, of the Belfast um, bicycle network plan and the strategic plan for greenways. There are, these are all very relevant to East Belfast, where we've seen um, the development of a number of excellent greenways, um, which I'm obviously keen to improve and to extend where possible, particularly keen that the Cumber Greenway joins the um, Conswater um, Community Greenway as a first-class facility. Thank you very much. Going to call Mr. Sean Lynn. Good to Karen Collier. Could the Minister give an update on the usage rates of cycles within the Belfast scheme? Going to good. Uh, thank the, the member for his question, and I'm delighted to say that there have been 150,000 journeys um, to date um, by the, um, the bike share programme, and that's just in, in, in nine months. Um, but also um, really pleased that the Belfast Trust and, Bicic and Belfast City Council are working to further expand the Belfast bikes across three Belfast hospital sites. Um, and I understand the decision is due to be taken at, at the Council today on these schemes, which are, are expected to be in place by Easter 2016. Um, this should include a link from the Royal Victoria Hospital site into Belfast City Centre. And this will give people more confidence to be able to make journeys um, by bicycle. I think the, the announcement is very timely with the ongoing works that my department is undertaking in order to provide safer space for um, bicycles in, in the city centre. And I call Ms. Maeve McGlock. John Corner, question number five. The A6 London Derry to Dungiven dueling scheme, which includes a bypass of Dungiven, is well advanced in terms of development. It has been through a public inquiry and the inspector has produced a report embracing various recommendations. My officials have prepared a report addressing the recommendations arising from the public inquiry and are currently reviewing the extent of this scheme, which can be built with the funding allocated in the December 2015 budget statement. Once I've received these reports and considered them in full, I will make a decision on how the scheme should proceed. The indicative allocations for the 2017-18 to 2021 period will allow my department to construct elements of the A6 Londonderry to Dungiven scheme, which will include a bypass of Dungiven, subject to making statutory orders, approval of the final business case and successful procurement. It is possible that the first phase of the Londonderry to Dungiven scheme should commence in the latter part of 2018-19. Thank you and call Ms McLaughlin for sub. And I thank the Minister for that and indeed uh, the commitment in relation to addressing the issues coming from the public inquiry. But I'm probably going to pursue this a bit harder. If, if there's any more detail that can be given in terms of timelines, I'm thinking specifically that don't give in to Clory and then Clory to Drumahoe and Drumahoe to Maydown sections. If there's any more detail the Minister could provide in relation to timelines on that. 
thank the member for her question and her perseverance. At, at this stage, I'm not going to be able to give any specific timeline, other than um, any announcement which will be made will, in, will include uh, at the Dungiven bypass. Um, but um, I would be hopeful that, I'll be, that an announcement will be made in, in the coming weeks in relation to this scheme once I've received all the final reports and been able to um, set in place um, a, a timescale um, for delivery. I'm call Mr. George Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, could I ask the Minister, would the Minister agree that the completion of this much needed roads project will enhance the tourist and economic potential of this large area of Northern Ireland? including smaller towns such as Macrofelt, Dungiven and Luma Valley. I want to thank the, um, the member for, for his question um, and, and again conscious obviously of, of the areas which the, the member represents. Um, but absolutely this is a key corridor. Um, it is a, it's an area which has which, and a scheme which has been on the cards for a very long time. So um, I felt, feel quite privileged to be in a position where I'll be able to make an announcement um, quite shortly in relation to that uh, and to see this area open up uh, and to be able to fulfil its tourist potential. Oh, Mr. Jared Dibber. Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for her uh, responses so far. Can I ask the Minister if she would agree with me that it's both shocking and bitterly disappointing that we are still discussing this issue and this question half a century after the initial decision was made to bypass Dungiven. Um, thank the member for um, for his question. I I, I, I think um, I, I do share the frustration of the member, probably not quite so much in that it isn't within my own constituency, um, but someone who has, has travelled that road many many times. Um, and to see obviously the condition and obviously the, the length of time that it, that it takes to, to get to, to Londonderry through, through um, Dungiven. Um, I, I, can, I do share the concerns that he has, but as I've said, that um, I am in a position where I should be able to make a, a, an announcement on that very shortly. In a very quick supplementary from Sandro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for that opportunity. Um, can I ask the Minister, uh, the question relates to, also to the money next section of the A6, and I wonder can the Minister provide an update uh, on our department's work with the landowners in that uh, money next section, and if there are any outstanding disagreements that, um, that still need to be resolved, and what action is in place for that? Um, thank the member for her question, and, and I understand that um, officials are liaising with landowners, but if there's, if there's something of, particular, of a particular nature, that, um, that the member feels that needs to be resolved, I'm, I'm more than content to, to meet with her uh, and to meet with the said landowners. Thank you. And we might have time just quickly for uh, a question from Ian Mull. Do I can call your test over a question six with the whole. I am acutely aware of the pressures facing the local industry as a result of budgetary pressures on capital funding for structural maintenance. I met a delegation from the Quarry Products Association on the 30th of November to discuss the impacts budget pressures are having on jobs, the loss of skills in the industry and the need to work across the water and indeed the impacts that this has on families. You'll appreciate that I've only been in this role a relatively short period of time but I have been active in that time. Structural maintenance is one of my highest priorities, although I'm conscious, uh, as I'm sure the member is, that there are many competing priorities, both at departmental and executive level. The structural maintenance budget for 2015-16 is currently estimated at £44 million, leaving a shortfall of some £97 million when compared to the independently assessed annual funding requirement. However, this has to be seen in the context of a £454 million investment over the last four years. I do not doubt that budgetary pressures are impacting on jobs, and I met with the Minister of Finance to discuss the funding arrangements for structural maintenance. However, it does not, um, it does not have to be recognised that it does have to be recognised that the executive has invested in many high-profile capital roads projects over a number of years. And this has been a significant boost for um, the local industry. I'm pleased to say that the starting position for structural maintenance in 2016-17, announced in the recent budget, is £46 million. And I will continue to make strong bids for additional funds just as we move through this process. 
Thank you, and I'm afraid we're out of time for listed questions, and we now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions, and I call Mr Trevor Lunn. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Could I ask the Minister for her assessment of the prospects of a, a rail link to Belfast International Airport? Um, thank the, the member for his question. Um, I, I imagine he's talking in relation to the, the Knockmore uh, Antrim um, branch line, which is obviously maintained by, by TransLink. Um, the DRD investment and prioritisation strategy for Northern Ireland, which was published in, in May 2014, did set out a vision um, uh, for um, future railways over the next 20 years. And obviously, there's, a, a, there's an economic benefit in relation to the Antrim um, to Knockmore line, and there are opportunities to establish um, a rail link to Belfast International Airport. Although my understanding is that, it would, that the, the usage around the um, airport would need to increase to around 10 million passengers just to make that rail link viable. And I suppose in some ways it is aspirational, but it is something that, we would, that would be seen as something very positive for Northern Ireland if we were able to do that, if we were able to open such a line again. Yeah, Mr Lund for supplement. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her answer so far. I mean, the, the economic case for reopening the Knockmore line with the link from the Dublin line to the north of the country and the airport uh, is, is fairly obvious, although it's expensive. But uh, would you not agree with me that, just in terms of the airport, that you know, Ryanair are now coming to Belfast International, that is obviously going to produce a, a major uplift in the number of passengers. Do we really need to wait until we have 10 million plus one? before we do something about this, or can we not anticipate what's liable to happen in the next few years? I thank the, the member for his, his, his question, and obviously sustainability is something which is key in everything that we do, particularly in, in, in uh, relation to our um, public transport routes. Um, you need only need to speak to his colleagues um, in East Antrim, and particularly around the Larn Line, um, and, and, and members in, in Newry in relation to the service in which they have. Um, we do need to look at, at cost. Um, that, that's, that is also key to, um, to where we are. But I think, you, I think the member needs also to be aware that we do have a very good um, bus link um, going from um, the, the international airport into the city centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister for an update on the proposed park and ride facility in Portadown, along with the potential costings uh, for the project? Uh, uh, thank, thank the member um, for his question. Um, just in relation to the park and ride at Portadown, um, TransLink has appointed a design team um, who have very advanced plans in relation to um, what's a 340 space um, park and ride facility just beside the, um, the rail station. Um, several meetings which have been very successful have been undertaken between TransLink and Transport, uh, Transport and I who actually own this particular site. Um, I've met with other members with regards to this as well um, and really our next step with regards to it is um, a pre-planning meeting um, with, the, with the council uh, with the hope that a planning application is um, likely to be put into place um, somewhere mid-2016 and with the project commencing somewhere around 2016-17. Um, Mr Anderson for a supplement. Yeah, and I, I do uh, thank the Minister for her answer, but can I also ask, is there any other uh, park and ride facilities proposed for the Upper Bond area? Um, like the member for a supplementary, and, and I meant to say that um, the cost of that project in Portadown is in the region of three million pounds. Um, with regards to other plans, I understand that um, areas in and around Lurgan and Banbridge are also being considered for park and ride facilities, um, and that's, that's obviously within his own constituency. I call Mr. Jerry Kelly. Uh, could I ask the minister if you could give an update on the York Street interchange project? Um, thank the, the member for his question. Um, my officials are currently reviewing the inspector's report um, on, public, on the public inquiry into the scheme, um, which was held towards the, the end of last year. Um, at this stage, I haven't been updated on that, but I hope to receive um, that very quickly, 
hopefully in advance of going into Parta so we can make a decision as to the way forward. Um, so I expect that to be with me um, in the next few weeks. Um, subject to this, a satisfactory outcome, the notice to proceed and the designation order um, will then be published. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, for supplementary. Thank you, Minister, for her uh, answer up to now. Uh, is, is the project, is this project uh, eligible for uh, 10T funding or any other EU uh, funding? I thank the member for his question. I understand that the, the interchange scheme has already received £1.2 million of, of EU funding as part of the development. Um, and it's one of very few schemes to be pre-identified for, for future funding. Um, the proposed construction programme of November 2017 to December 2020 aligns for the funding profile expected for the next call. Uh, and therefore, the scheme will be in a pretty good place to have a, a good, strong bid. Uh, the project lies on the North Sea Mediterranean corridor within the 10T network. Um, officials have successfully negotiated um, for, this, uh, for the interchange's inclusion as a pre-identified project within the corridor work plan. Thank you. And I call Ms. Bradman McGuffin. Guramayogadan, can the minister give an update on the Inniskillen bypass? Uh, and just in relation to the, the A4 Enniskillen um, Southern Bypass, the preferred alignment was published in June 2015. Um, further progression of the project um, through the statutory procedures to construction will obviously be very much dependent on the availability of finance. Um, should finance become available, um, it would take around 18 months to two years before work could start on, on the ground. So it's still some time off in relation to that. For a supplement. I, I thank the Minister for her response. Um, will the Minister agree with me that following the capital funding for the A5 and the A6 that it is vital um, that this bypass becomes a priority? Uh, I thank the, the member for a question and obviously it is, is it a, a priority in, in Fermanagh um, but the, the pace of the development of all, all major road schemes are very much dependent on financial resources and at this time the executive priority is being given um, to the A5, the A8, the, A5, the A6, the A26, um, the macro felt bypass so obviously while it is a priority it, it has other projects just ahead of it. Thank you. And I call Ms. Katrina Ryan. Oh, but, um, and given the severe weather conditions and indeed lack of investment um, and the deteriorating effect this is having on our roads, could the Minister update me on her department's plan to deal with damaged uh, roads caused by flooding in South Down? I thank the, the member for her, her question. And, and obviously, the severe weather has taken its toll on all our roads, not just those in, in South Down. Um, we do have a, a duty to maintain um, all public roads in, in reasonable condition and despite the budgetary um, constraints, um, the department has been trying, to, trying its hardest to um, keep roads open and in, in good condition. Um, I would ask the member if there are particular roads within her constituency which she feels that need to be attended to, um, that if she would contact me, um, I'll certainly look into that and give her a response. And Katrina Ryan for I I thank the, uh, the Minister for her response and I certainly will write and let you know the roads. I told you one earlier but I'll say it again to the Harry Hill Road in Hilltown. But could the Minister outline how much of the £1 million earmark for flood hit roads will be spent in the South Down constituency? At, at this time obviously the, the priority has obviously been in, in Fermanagh and um, in, in areas around um, the, A, the A1 and Portadown. Um, with regards to South Down I would need to, I'd need to go back to, to you with the details in relation to that. Thank you. And I call Mr Raymond McCarrick. <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, Mr Speaker, I can ask the Minister and this feature this morning on our radio, our radio foil news broadcast. I'm just wondering does she have the completion date for the phase two of the Derry to Coleraine cool line, including uh, Halt at Bellarina? I thank the member for, for his question. And, and, I, and I visited um, the Halt at Bellarina to see the progress of that. And I understand that it's on schedule to be substantially completed by the end of this year. Thank you, Mr. Kearney, for a supplementary. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 
Thank you very much, and can I thank the Minister for her answer and indeed for visiting the site. I'm just wondering, in relation to having seen that work, has, has she any update on the progress on Phase 3 and what sort of capital investment will be required for it? Uh, my understanding in relation to Phase 3 is that it's in around 20, 2021. Um, the project would have to be established in order to take this forward, and it would be after um, Phase 2 is complete. So obviously that is something which is, is still um, on, the, on the cards to, to be looked at. And a Commissar Alistair Law. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Minister will be aware that Debbie has um, granted an exploratory drilling licence for Woodburn Forest in my own constituency. Um, given that Northern Ireland Water own a portion of the land there at, at, at Woodburn Forest, I wondered what plans are in place to allow that exploratory drilling to take place. I uh, thank the member for his question. And just in relation to Woodburn, Northern Ireland Water owns the land for the forest and they have agreed to, to lease a small portion of the forest for drilling um, of the well. Um, this work will be undertaken by an independent company under a license which, as he said, has been rewarded by, by Deddy. Planning functions, as you're aware, transferred to local government with effect from the 1st of, of April um, 2015 and the issue of the permitted development rights and any request for certificate of lawful use of the development is the responsibility of the local council planning department. Um, the council responsible in this instance is Mid and East Antrim Council. Uh, all work, I understand, will be subject to the approval and agreement of the Council, Deddy and Dards Forest Service, who own the trees and manage the land as a forest. And Mr Ross, for some of yes, The Minister will be aware, um, any time we involve drilling, there is obviously quite rightly concern amongst the public around safety issues, particularly when it comes to water supplies. I wonder if the Minister can give her assessment of whether uh, there is any risk to the water supply uh, following on from the export to drilling. And thank, thank the member for his question. My, my understanding is that the exploration project at Woodburn has been designed um, to prevent liquids on site from soaking into the ground below it, um, thereby protecting the local water courses and ensuring that there will be no adverse impact on the Woodburn River and also the dam's catchment. Uh, Northern Ireland Water, um, as the licensed public drinking water provider, has a duty under drinking water quality legislation just to assess all potential risks uh, within the catchments on its drinking water sources and to put in place appropriate sampling and where required any possible mitigation measures. Uh, Northern Ireland Water have advised that it is satisfied that the proposed work will have no detrimental impact upon um, the impounding um, reservoirs or indeed the um, public water supply. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Minister will be aware, uh, I'm sure, of the delays, the considerable delays felt by new applicants and those renewing their applications for the Blue Badge scheme. Can the Minister tell the House if the current Blue Badge, if current Blue Badge holders awaiting renewal can use their current outdated badge? Um, thank, th thank the member for his, his question. Uh, and I am more than aware of, of the issues in relation to delays for processing the blue badges. Um, the blue badge unit has been given additional staff to help deal with the backlog of applications. And I'm pleased to say that that backlog has reduced quite considerably um, from over 8,000 applications to 4,602 at present. Um, staff are currently dealing with um, assessed applications received in early December and the automatic eligibility applications received on 30th of December 2015. Um, at present, the, the, new, um, the new application can actually be completed online. Um, and can I also give the member an assurance that um, my understanding is that those um, badges are, are still valid um, while, they're, while um, the new badges are being processed. Oh, Mr. McCrossan for a supplement. Uh, thank you, Minister, for your, for your answer. You have more or less answered my supplementary at the stage. It was just basically um, details on how the new scheme will be rolled out and the timeframes for that. Okay, and thank the, the member for his question. A project is ongoing actually at present to modernise um, the blue badge application process similar to the system available in, in the rest of the United Kingdom. Um, this should make the application process much easier and also less susceptible to fraud um, and also will make all aspects of application easier with regards to renewal and, and duplicate requests being available online. So this is all good news moving forward.
not in this place, or Mr. Sammy Douglas. Can I congratulate the Minister on a very busy and brisk question time? Well done. And the House will take its ease whilst we wait on the next Minister. Thank you.